In this video, I want to show you how to build the necessary mechanics to do dynamic debt sizing and debt sculpting in a project finance model. Okay, so just going to take you through uh, the exercise file. If you download the exercise file in the sheet called exercise one, we have a one pager model. It has the necessary building blocks to create a standard financial model, but it's a one pager and it's a simplified model. So it has the flags and counters. It has a section for inputs. And today we are going to focus on this topic, which is the debt sizing. And we're going to look at the two different techniques for debt sizing. The first one is the maximum debt to capital. Then we're going to look at the minimum DSCR constraint. And we can also activate the third one, which is going to use the minimum of these two as the debt sizing. But before we start doing the debt sizing, first of all, just want to let you know that before you do the debt sizing, you need to make sure that you have these following components already built into your model. You need your revenue section, you need your OPEX blocks, you need your CAPEX and taxes and anything operational to basically get to the um, cash flow waterfall and have this line called cash flow before financing. So that's the line that you are going to use to size the debt based on the minimum DSCR constraint. And using the capex and adding to it financing cost, you will get to the total project cost and you're going to use that to size the debt based on maximum debt to capital ratio. Okay, so let's come to the part in the model where we want to do the debt sizing and this is in the sources and uses section. So the first thing you need to do is to calculate the amount of debt that can be raised based on the maximum debt to capital constraint. So we have an input of 75%, which is in our input sheet. And we have our total project cost. This is going to give us the maximum debt that can be raised using the debt to capital ratio method. Now for the minimum DSCR calculation, we know that the future debt service, target debt service is equal to this line, which is our cash flow before financing divided by the minimum DSCR which is imposed by the lenders and you can find it in the loan agreement. So it is in the input section. So the only thing you need to do to calculate this uh, target debt service is to take your cash flow divided by the input target minimum DSCR and multiply it by the repayment flag. Once you have done that, you already have your target future debt service. Now what you need to do is to discount these values back to your COD dates so that you have your maximum debt amount. In order to do the discounting, the question is what is the discount rate to be used in this exercise? Here, because we only have one tranche of debts, therefore, uh, it's kind of easy. The discount rate will be the interest rate. If we have multiple tranches of debt, then the question will become more complex. So we take our interest rate, and since this model is semi-annual, we're going to take the semi-annual interest rate for discounting. The discount factor is will be nothing but for the first period is going to be one times one plus the interest rate multiplied by the repayment flag. Once again, the reason we multiply by the repayment flag is to start discounting from COD. If you want, you can also express this discount factor in terms of weights, in terms of percentages so that you know exactly what are the weights that you're attaching to the future cash flow. Now, to calculate the maximum debt, meaning to get the present value of these future cash flows, 
you can use the sum product function and ask Excel to go to this row of data. For each cell in this row of data, go and multiply them by the weights. And that's going to be our discounting. So based on the minimum DSCR constraint now, our debt sizing is limited to 5.4 million. That, okay? So, which is much less than, you know, in the debt to capital ratio. And since we introduced this third method, which is going to be the minimum of the two. So now you are allowing the user to either size the debt based on the maximum debt to capital ratio, or to use the minimum DSCR ratio, or if they want, they can just put it to minimum and depending on the scenario and the cash flow, the model would take the minimum of the two.